Creatine seems to be all the rage these days. This incredibly well-studied supplement turns out to be a lot more versatile and potentially beneficial than we once realized. Now, patients have been asking me about it, uh, colleagues have been talking about it, and I've personally been taking creatine for a long time. So I thought it's time to make a video about it. Hello, my name is Dr. Grant Cooper. I'm the co-founder and the co-director of Princeton Spine and Joint Center. In this video, we are going to explore what creatine is, who should and maybe who shouldn't be taking creatine, and what dosage should you be taking. Let's jump in. First, as I mentioned at the top, I've been taking creatine for many years, and I've been recommending it to my patients for a long time as well. Now, with that said, new information about creatine has changed the dosage that I take and also the reasons that I take and recommend it. Historically, the reason that I've taken creatine and the reason that I've recommended it to my patients and to my friends is because of its proven positive effects on building additional strength and muscle mass when combined with strength training exercise. That is, you build more strength and you build more muscle if you work out and take creatine than if you just work out and you don't take creatine. Now, as I mentioned, creatine is one of the best studied supplements out there and its effects on muscle is very well documented. What is relatively new and what has propelled creatine into the latest news cycle is our growing understanding and appreciation that creatine may also help with a host of other factors such as improving memory, lessening cognitive fatigue, improving focus, improving mood, improving overall energy, reducing inflammation, and improving bone density. Now, as part of this increasing awareness of creatine's varied effects on the entire body, it's also a revisiting of the question of what is the optimal dosage of creatine to accomplish all that it seeks to help us with, and we're going to get into the dosages very soon. Let's back up for just a moment and talk about what creatine is. Creatine is a compound that's made of three amino acids, arginine, glycine, and methionine. Your body makes creatine naturally in your liver, your kidneys, and your pancreas. You also get a small amount of creatine from foods such as red meat and fish, unless you're a vegan, in which case creatine supplementation can be particularly helpful for you. About 95% of the creatine in your body is stored in your muscles, and then you also have small amounts of creatine found in your brain and your other organs. Creatine is primarily important in helping your body create energy by helping to recycle your ATP faster. When you supplement with creatine, the gold standard form of creatine to take is called creatine monohydrate. Creatine monohydrate is the best studied, cheapest, and most effective form of creatine. You can get micronized creatine, which is just smaller particles that have no particular clinical advantage, but it does make it easier to mix. Now, most people, when supplementing, take three to five grams of creatine per day. After taking this for three to four weeks, most people will have reached saturation of creatine in their muscles. Taking additional creatine at this point will not help your muscles anymore. Some people do a loading phase of creatine to saturate their muscles faster by taking, for example, 20 to 25 grams of creatine uh, per day for five to seven days and then dropping down to five grams per day. But... That's not necessary, and most people these days just take the steady dose. For the muscles, creatine helps you work harder, recover faster, and actually look bigger because your muscles retain extra water in the cells. Over time, people who work out and also are taking 3 to 5 grams of creatine per day put on more muscle mass and increase their strength more than those that are working out without taking creatine. Importantly, creatine is not just for bodybuilders. Creatine can help anyone build and retain more muscle mass and strength as long as it's also paired with strength training exercises. The newer research has been showing that when you supplement with 3 to 5 grams per day of creatine monohydrate, the muscle gobble up that creatine and it helps with strength. However, if you take more than 3 to 5 grams per day, and some studies suggest taking 10 to 20 grams per day, then the other parts of your body, such as the brain, the heart, and the testes, upload that extra creatine as well. Specifically, in the brain, 5 to 20 grams per day has been shown to improve healthy people's memory, improve mental clarity, and reduce mental fatigue. 
and sleep deprived people, five to eight grams per day of creatine can improve cognitive performance under stress. Five to 10 grams per day may help with depressive symptoms. In the heart, five to 10 grams per day has been shown to improve cardiac output in heart failure patients. It's also been shown to help with glucose uptake when combined with exercise. One interesting recent double-blind placebo-controlled study done at the University of Novi Sad in Serbia evaluated 12 patients with post-COVID-19 fatigue syndrome. The subjects were either given 4 grams of creatine monohydrate per day or a placebo over the course of six months. The study found that there was a significant reduction in general fatigue in the creatine group after three months of treatment. Other long COVID symptoms such as loss of taste, breathing difficulties, body aches, headaches, and brain fog improved significantly by six months. Research is currently evaluating whether creatine supplementation may help with neurodegenerative conditions such as Parkinson's, ALS, or multiple sclerosis, and also maybe to help with brain injuries as well. What do we make of all this? Is creatine some kind of wonder supplement? Well, of course it's not magic, but it does seem to offer many potential advantages with minimal downside for most people. Before we talk about dosages, let's ask, is creatine safe to take? The answer to that in two words is mostly yes. Creatine has been very well studied, and there are follow-up studies well beyond five years that show no harmful effects in generally healthy individuals. There has been no damage shown to the kidneys or to the liver in healthy individuals. Now, with that said, it's still wise to talk to your doctor before taking creatine, particularly if you have kidney disease, impaired kidney function, or if you take medications that could be affecting your kidney health. Now, if you're pregnant or if you're breastfeeding, then I would personally recommend against taking it just because there hasn't been much research in this regard as to its safety. So I would advise erring on the side of better safe than sorry. At a minimum, again, talk to your doctor before taking this or any supplement, especially if you're pregnant or if you're breastfeeding. So you're interested in taking creatine, but what dose should you take? Most of the research has been done using creatine dosages of three to five grams. There are many studies that have been performed at higher dosages, but not nearly as many studies and without the long-term follow-up as those with three to five grams per day. So if you're planning on taking dosages that are higher than five grams per day, I would personally suggest that you discuss it with your doctor and consider just checking your kidney and liver function tests intermittently for a while, just to make sure that they aren't being negatively impacted. Regarding lab work, when you take creatine supplements, you should tell your healthcare provider when they order blood work because creatine supplementation can increase one of your lab values that looks at kidney function. The lab value involved is called creatinine, and it's a marker that many doctors use to evaluate your overall kidney function. However, if you're taking creatine supplementation, then an elevated creatinine level may be artificial and not actually reflect kidney problems. There's another lab test that many doctors prefer to use to evaluate kidney function, and this is called cystatin C. Your doctor may want to order that instead or in addition to a creatinine level. Or you can have a urine test for more accurate kidney function as well. So what dosage should you take of creatine? The dosage you choose is going to depend on your goals. If your goal is to only increase the strength and size of your muscle, then I would stick to three to five grams per day. Taking additional creatine won't help your muscles because at five grams per day, your muscles will already be saturated after four weeks. However, if you're hoping to reap the other potential benefits of creatine, then taking about 10 grams per day does seem reasonable to me. Now back to my story, I've historically taken five grams of creatine per day, but I've recently increased my creatine intake to 10 grams per day, and I've been doing that for a little more than four weeks. Now, personally, I haven't noticed any changes, mental or otherwise, with the increased dosage, but I'm going to stick with it for a while and continue to track how I feel. Now, if I do stay on this for months at the higher dosage, I'll likely double-check my lab work just to make sure that nothing is changing for the worse, just to be careful. One last note on creatine. The main side effects of creatine supplementation is gastrointestinal upset. 
the best way to minimize this is to drink lots of water. And you should generally drink extra water anyway when taking creatine because creatine pulls water into your muscles. So you should plan on just drinking a little extra water to compensate for this. Also, if you take 10 grams per day or more and you have stomach upset with the extra creatine supplementation, then you might want to try dividing the dosage throughout the day. So maybe take half of your dose in the evening and half in the morning, that type of thing. I hope you found this video useful. If you've enjoyed it and you've learned something, then please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tell a friend who might find benefit from the channel as well. And as always, if you have topics that you would like me to cover in a future video, or if you have any other comments, including if you could, if you want to share your own experiences with creatine, then please leave a message in the comment section. As always, I wish you all the best of health. Thank you very much.